Alright, so this is my guide for how to beat the unspeakable, unspeakable deep in Sultan Sanctuary. Its name is unspeakable, apparently. Um, this is the first boss you encounter, and you only get one shot at it. So if you mess up and die, you have to start a new character to try again. Uh, I'm taking the popper. Its pitchfork is nice for clearing out the beginning enemies. I'm not going to bother with the shield, and I'm going to two-hand the axe for the boss fight. The effect you take doesn't really matter for the boss fight. You might be able to use a red shard to heal during it if you manage to survive a hit. Uh, I'm taking the amber idol just because I want it later in the game. If you take the grasp ring, ring, you get something like 10,000 salt from the battle. If you don't, you get 8,120 if I remember correctly. And just give me a second here to turn down my audio. So, first part, using the chork. Um, if anyone has a better class to start with than the popper for this, feel free to tell me and I'll edit it in with an annotation or something. Um, I haven't tried it with many classes. I like the popper. Um, I've heard Cleric is pretty good. It has like Mend or something so that you can heal if you survive. I'm not sure. Ah, oh, it's a good hit. Not that it matters. Alright, so here, gonna go under 25% equip load. Just get rid of this and this. And here we go. So a quick attack with your axe is gonna do 6 damage, and a strong attack is gonna do 9. Um, I almost exclusively use quick attacks. For this fight. Um, if he's in the corner like that, I'll always bait him out back out to the middle. And then the entire fight is one phase, like he does not do a phase change. And for every attack he does, once he starts, you just want to roll either between his legs or, be or behind his legs, and you'll be perfectly safe. Like, the fight is that simple. This is all that he will do. So just keep rolling, make sure you're watching your stamina. Um, this is the only time in the game that I've actually noticed that there's a wounding effect for your stamina. Not sure if it, wounding's not the right word, because that's for health. Probably like fatigue or something. And that every time you use a move, your max stamina goes down slightly. It's pretty significant by the end of this fight, but it's not too big a deal as long as you're paying attention. Yeah, so every every attack is all bad. The only hard part of this fight is making sure you don't make it so now. Um, if you do die, like, you can still die. It's an easy fight, but it's pretty tedious. It takes about 5 or 6 minutes. So it can be really frustrating to die, but all in all, boss fight is not that bad. One of the easier culture games. Also, besides the trophy, you do get a ton of salt. I think you get to level 12 if you take the grasp, grasp ring ring. So that's really nice for starting. Every time I start a new character, I, just, I try to beat this guy. Because it's just really, really convenient for any to beat the whole 12. You can kill the Sodden Knight in like a couple of hits. So I'm trying to bait him back out towards the middle. start with the popper you have these brine fire pots. Um, I don't like them. They're not like fire bombs or molotovs or souls games of bloodborne where they do a ton of damage at once. It's more of a lingering effect from what I can tell. And if anything it just throws off the group that you're in for the fight. So I don't find them all that useful. Most of the time, if you stagger this boss, it's actually detrimental, if anything. There's not a lot you can do to you know, not stagger it. 
but if you stagger it, a lot of times it'll stop whatever it's attack it's doing and face directly at you while you're still attacking, and then it can start an attack. Put you in a bit of a tight situation if you aren't being careful with stamina. Staggered him and it was actually helpful for once. Looks like I did get it. Alright, so 8,000. 8,000 salt and gold. And there you go. 